Why are all my friends going home to parents? And then I'm like going home to my grandparents instead. Yeah, so like at night, I, I cried myself to sleep only. Very sad. <laughs> then I also had like nightmares also. Like I dream of my father, then I wake up and I'm like, oh no, I miss my dad. Then I just cry. Off. I started having suicidal thoughts when I was younger already. Yeah, then I thought like, okay, like maybe if I disappear, then my parents can have a happy marriage again. My relationship with my parents has never actually been good. Cause like, growing up, I guess I got a lot of pent up frustration against them. Cause they were never there, like throughout any of my milestone. Divorce has become a fairly common practice in the United States since the 1970s when divorce became statistically prevalent. Almost half of families experience divorce, leaving many children confused, lost, and sometimes put in the middle. When a divorce happens in a family, even if the child is younger, they see the family fall apart. Parents arguing in front of their child prior to making the official decision can have a strong effect on the child, making a confusing situation worse. Whether you are 5 or 15, children oftentimes believe they are the reason for the divorce occurring. They cannot understand why the shift was made from parents loving each other to not being able to make it work. Feeling this way can make a child develop a long-term guilt complex and can also affect behavior at home and at school. If friends aren't going through the same struggles as a child, they often feel alone. One day they have a family like everyone else and the next day they are the odd one out with no one to talk to. Being disruptive in class and argumentative at home is not unusual for kids going through separation or divorce. Feeling like they have no one to talk to can cause outbreaks from the stress they are feeling. Children are always going to be the ones that divorce affects most. All children will always want is for life to go back to normal, where mom and dad are living under the same roof. Well, that will not always be a possible situation. It's important for parents to come together and make the best out of a poor situation, if not for them, then for the sake of the child or children involved. Um, it affected me because I had to kind of like move my whole life to another house and I just kind of had to adjust to it overall. Uh, it kind of made it better with both of them because I get to spend more time with them individually. No, because our parents have such a unique relationship that uh, they can still like come together and they both come to both my birthdays and it's just like they can stay in the same room together. That's how good they get on still. So. No, um, they kind of made it clear that they had their own problems and it was never really, they made it clear that it was never really me and my sister's fault. I mean, 50-50, because I still kind of wish our parents were still together. But at the same time, I think it worked out a lot better. Because like I said before, um, they seemed to get along better a lot more than I can remember when they were married. And so I think it's honestly better for our family. While children are arguably the most important factors during a divorce, the effects on parents can be devastating as well. Some divorces can leave parents alone taking care of kids, and other times it takes away everything they knew, essentially starting a new life without their partner. When thinking of divorce, the first thing that comes to mind is what about the children? But in the midst of a nasty court-involved divorce, the effects it can have on parents are just as bad. The American Counseling Association describes going through divorce similar to going through grief. Thus, the seven stages of divorce were created. Denied Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, and rebuilding. In between all these stages are opportunities for parents to grow and learn who their friends are and who they are without a spouse. Communication is one of the most important parts when going through a divorce, not only between parents and kids, but also between parents and parents. Healthy communication between parents can help children see that life with separate parents isn't the end of their family and it's possible for parents to be friends. Rebuilding life post-divorce can be one of the hardest things to do. According to the Social Readjustment Rating Scale developed in 1967 by psychiatrists Thomas Holmes and Richard Ray, divorce is the second most stressful life event for adults only behind the death of a spouse, but people can rebuild their lives and have a hopeful future. Through the support of family and friends, parents may find that life without a spouse might make them happier and their relationship with their kids stronger. 
There is no debate that divorce is hard on everyone involved. There is also no debate that divorce can happen for multiple different reasons. Sociologists have spent a lot of time trying to see divorce through different perspectives and have been successful in doing so. The functionalist perspective sees divorce from a negative point of view. This perspective blames divorce on the fa failure of social institutions rather than the individuals involved in the divorce. Functionalism is about promoting communication, cohesiveness, and uniformity. Thus, this perspective supports traditional and historical family norms and our pro to lowering the divorce rate. Unlike the functionalist perspective, the symbolic interactionalism theory looks at the problems within the individuals rather than the problems within society. Symbolic interactionalists believe that the behaviors are learned and that divorce happens because two people have been influenced by the other people around them, like friends and family. The final theory is the conflict theory. The conflict theory has one question attached to it. Who is the divorce benefiting? Divorce can get costly with lawyer fees and child support. A conflict theorist would want people to know that the couple loses money during the divorce and the government benefits from the taxes. The conflict theory would also believe that society is at fault for a divorce and that the couple involved are essentially choosing the easy way out. The different sociological perspectives give insight on divorce through a lens without personal opinions. While not every person may see divorce through one of these lenses, it's a way to observe the patterns of society and behaviors. So far, how children and parents have been affected separately by divorce has been discussed, but how does divorce affect the relationship between parents and children? A study in 1983 was done by Mark Fine, John Moreland, and Andrew Schwebel, where 100 students with parents that had been divorced for seven years or more were asked questions about their relationships with their parents. While it varied from person to person, a commonality was that kids' relationships with their fathers were far less positive than their relationships with their mothers. It was found that the involvement of a father Father post divorce and the stress that was placed on the mother were critical factors of the quality of what parent child relationship looks like post divorce. Overall, divorce is a complicated and confusing process for all those involved. The question of how divorce affects families will never truly be answered because it varies from person to person and family to family. It's important for parents and children to keep an open line of communication and make sure support is available on all ends. Families are getting divorced every day, but there is hope for stable family life through working through the hardship of change and leaning on each other.